Hello and welcome to the Thursday, June 22nd, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Minneapolis, Minnesota. A few weeks ago, I reported about OpenVPN undergoing a code review and security audit, which resulted in only relatively minor vulnerabilities being found and, of course, fixed within OpenVPN. Well, a big surprise today, we got four more vulnerabilities in OpenVPN that were found independently of the security audit via fuzzing. Kind of the point of the author here is that security audits using code review only get you so far that with the complexity of some of the software, fuzzing appears to be a more thorough and more efficient way of finding security vulnerabilities. So really yet another great example about how fuzzing can augment some of the more traditional techniques like code review. Luckily, none of the four vulnerabilities I would consider really critical. Uh, three of them are pretty much denial of service vulnerabilities. The fourth one is a remote client stack buffer corruption, which may in some cases be exploitable, not really sure. But as uh, the author here of the report states, that it's very unlikely to actually happen. In order for this fourth vulnerability to be exploited and to, to actually to be vulnerable, you need to have NTLM version 2 used and the user actually needs to specify a username ending in a backslash and it depends on a very specific stack layout. So overall, don't panic, apply patches as they are being released. These vulnerabilities have been disclosed to the OpenVPN team and patches are available. So thanks to Guido Franken for actually taking the time to find and report these vulnerabilities. And in order to do their job, antivirus software often has to decompress various files or unpack them. Now, one common compression format is RAR. And a few years ago, Travis Ormandy from Google found a vulnerability in RAR that was used in, for example, Sophos. Sophos fixed it back then, but apparently the coordination between different anti-malware makers didn't work quite well. And so last week, uh, Google found the same vulnerability again in Bitdefender. This is now fixed and Google released details about the vulnerability yesterday. So if you are using Bitdefender, uh, please update to fix this vulnerability in the UnRAR library. About a month ago, WannaCry kept us all busy and today we have a diary by Mark Hoffman reminding us uh, to really take to heart some of the lessons learned with WannaCry. In particular, that you do have control of your assets, you know what's on your network and you have a plan to patch these assets in a timely manner. Now, another reminder about WannaCry comes from Japan. Apparently, a Honda car factory had to shut down briefly because WannaCry yet again flared up on their network. The theory here is that the systems on that network were vulnerable and that an employee brought in a device that was infected with WannaCry, but the actual infection was not fully developed because the device connected to the employee's home network did was able to connect to the kill switch domain but once it was connected to the factory network it could no longer reach uh, the kill switch domain which then started up WannaCry and also started infecting machines on the factory floor. Keeping uh, these factory systems patched is always very tricky. Lots of custom hardware and custom software involved which often does prevent patching in a timely manner that we are used to from regular office networks. Of course, in this case, it may actually have hurt the network that it was isolated from the internet because that way it could not reach the kill switch domain and that in the end allowed WannaCry to spread again. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.